activity. Today I'll share about sampling. First look at the introduction. Sampling is a process of selecting a sample from the population. Means the researcher can make a conclusion about the population of interest based on the selected sample. So sampling techniques is a scientific method of selecting sample from the population. So sampling process can reduce time, cost, and manpower. We proceed to terminologies in sampling. First, probability sample, known as random sample. So this one, every element in the population has known or has a probability to be selected as sample. Then, this random sample required sampling frame. Number two, non-probability sample, which known as non-random sample. So this one, a sample does not have the feature of probability sample then the sampling frame is unavailable. What is the sampling frame? The sampling frame is a list of all the items in the population of interest. Okay, next, sampling units. So, the sampling units is the elements listed in the sampling frame. Then, sample survey design. So this one refer to a process or procedure for selecting a sample from the population. Sampling error. So this error arises because a sample cannot give complete or cannot give any information on a population of interest. Meanwhile, non-sampling error, error that arise because of incomplete or false information gathered from the selected samples. Okay, so this one types of sampling technique. First is non-probability sampling, convenience sampling, judgmental sampling, and quota sampling. Then probability sampling, simple random sampling, systematic sampling, stratified sampling, cluster sampling, and multi-stage sampling. First, non-probability sampling is convenience sampling. So, these sample units are only selected if they can be accessed easily and conveniently. The researcher may select respondents at the right time in the right place. So, the advantage by using convenience sampling, less time and also less expensive. For example, a researcher may look for the first 100 students that enter university as samples. Means that the researcher may choose or may pick any student. The keyword here is any student, anybody. As long first 100 students that enter university as his samples. Second non probability sampling is judgmental sampling. So this one, sample selected based on the researcher's opinion or researcher's knowledge. So good judgment will give a good result. But what happened? Bad judgment. Of course, bad result. Okay, so look at simple example. ABC company has decided to sample opinions of other companies regarding the economic forecast for next year. Okay, so the manager choose samples to be interviewed. Okay, so for this example, this one become judgmental. Why? So why this is judgmental sampling? Because of the manager choose sample to be interviewed. Means there is no sampling frame. The manager may choose based on his opinion or based on his knowledge if he has good knowledge so the sample will be representative and last for non probability sampling is quota sampling so the word quota itself means the number of people to be selected or the number of people to be interviewed so this one chosen by the researcher so that the sample become representative but 
the sample can be controlled for a certain characteristics or guideline. For example, a survey regarding on the internet facility during online class in University A. The researcher may choose 65% diploma students and 35% of degree students as his respondent. That's why quota based on number and then can be controlled based on certain characteristics. Now, we will proceed to probability sampling technique. First, simple random sampling. The sample is selected from the homogeneous population means the characteristics of the population is similar or same. Then, all the items have equal chance to be selected as sample. So, the keyword here is equal chance to be selected as sample. Okay, then, under simple random sampling, there are two methods. First one, lottery method. Then, second is random number method. Okay, normally random number generated from computer. So this one, the illustration for a simple random sampling. This one is population, homogeneous population. Then all items from the population have equal chance to be selected as sample. Means no bias, equal chance to be selected as sample. Look at the process under simple random sampling. First, for sure, the researcher need a complete sampling frame. Next, you need to label each element with the number. Okay, then, choose one by one sample without replacement by using lottery method or random number method. So, this one, process for simple random sampling. This one is systematic sampling. So, systematic sampling refer to a random starting point is selected and then every eight member of the homogeneous population is selected. So, same as simple random sampling, homogeneous population. But, systematic sampling easier to implement compared to simple random sampling. So, look at the process under systematic. First, sampling frame. Second, find the uniform interval, which denoted by I. Population size divided by sample size. Third, choose first sample randomly within the uniform interval. Then, the remaining sample selection are based on this formula. Look at simple example. Select 5 students out of 15 using systematic sampling technique. Okay, so look at this 15 smiley face. Okay, then how to select 5 students out of 15? First step, you need to calculate uniform interval. So population size 50. Then Sample size 5. So 15 divided by 5 equal to 3. Means first 3. You, as a researcher, you can choose any one from the first 3 as your first sample. Okay, let's say, let's say sample. From first item here first so first item listed in the sampling frame was selected as first sample so this one become first sample okay next the remaining sample here is first sample and then next three so this one second sample means 1 plus 3 equal to 4. So, the item listed in number 4 based on sampling frame become second sample. And then, next 3. 4 plus 3, 7. So, third sample here. Until 
five students was selected as sample. Okay, like that. So that one systematic sampling technique. Now about the certified sampling technique. So for this sampling technique, the population is divided into subgroup. We call it strata. Then the sample is randomly selected from each strata. Okay. How about the characteristics? Hmm. The characteristics within the group are homogeneous, but between the group are heterogeneous. For example, select 50 respondents from each race. Okay, let's say Malay 100 population size, Chinese population size is 60, Indian 30, and other race is 10. So how to select 50 students from each race? For sure, we will use stratified sampling technique. Why? Because we will select respondent from each race. So here, from each race is the keyword. Okay. First, step one, calculate sample from each strata using this formula. This one. Okay, let's say sample size for Malay. 100 population size for Malay then divide by total population which is 200 times 50 so 50 here based on how many respondents the researcher needs so equal to 25 so 25 respondents will be selected from Malay race how to select 25 out of 100. So, the researcher may implement simple random or systematic sampling to select 25 respondents out of 100 Malay race. So, this one step how the researcher want to apply stratified sampling technique. But remember that the keyword to implement stratified sampling is the characteristic within the group is same but between the group is different that's why the researcher select sample from each group from each group this one is cluster sampling previous is stratified sampling so the comparison between these two sampling technique is the characteristics. Okay, so for cluster sampling, characteristics between group is homogeneous, but within group is heterogeneous. Okay, then the group will be selected at random. Then all items, all items. So here is all item from selected group become sample. First select group, then all items from selected group become sample. Look at this simple example for blocks A, B, C, D. So cluster sampling technique. We call that first select group. Let's say select group B and C. What happened to block A and D? Automatically out of the survey. Okay, then after select block, all items from the selected blocks become sample. Means that sample equal to 60 plus 50 equal to 110. So this one is a sample size by using cluster sampling technique. Okay, we proceed to multi-stage sampling. 
So the word multi, what doesn't it mean? So researcher selects sample using more than one step or more than one stage of a sample selection. So the keyword here is more than one step or more than one stage. That's why we call it multi-stage. So the objective using multi-stage sampling technique is to reduce time, cost and manpower when working with samples from very large population. So look at this example. An immunization survey of school children in a particular state. Okay, let's assume that the researcher select at random a sample of three districts. Then, from each of three selected districts, he select three areas. After that, he selects only four schools. Then, 50 school children will be selected as sample from selected schools. So, in total, the researcher will have 1,800 school children as his sample. So, means the example can be illustrated like this. From a state and then select district, then select area, then school at the end, 50 school children from selected school. So, this one is multi-stage sampling technique from very large population. So, it is suitable to apply multi-stage. Okay guys, let's try to identify the sampling technique used for these questions. Try first, then check your answers. Next three questions. What is the sampling technique used? Try first, then check your answers. Okay guys, that's all about sampling. Assalamualaikum and da.